Hey guys, today I am going to try, let me see, one, two, three, about three or four new Merit Beauty products. If you haven't seen my first impressions on Merit Beauty like in general, I'm gonna link it up here and in the description box. So let me explain real quick for those of you who haven't seen it or if you're new to my channel. Merit Beauty is a clean beauty brand, therefore it is paraben free, sulfate free, cruelty free, vegan, it's all of that. You can get it at sephora.com or you can pick it up at meritbeauty.com. They reached out to me and sent me a box full of items for me to try kind of like a first impression I had never heard of the brand before I know I've been living on the rock I'm sorry but I'm being honest in that video that was all first impressions and so now I got another box with a few items and I figured you know what maybe I should try the items that I haven't tried before that were included in that box and also give you guys an update because I feel like with every video, I just try new products, new products, and I don't often enough give you guys an update as to how I feel after the first impressions of the products. So that's what I wanna do in today's video. Also, I'm gonna create a look that is gonna work for all age ranges. It's gonna be more on the natural side, but I think people with mature skin are gonna absolutely love it. I'm gonna give some tips and tricks for mature skin. I understand that I don't have mature skin, but I have worked with mature skin in the past when I was freelancing. I've, I've, I've had skin that sometimes felt intimidating, but the ultimate look was stunning. It was beautiful. They didn't want to take their makeup off. They wanted me to like shellac it to their face. And every chance they get, they have me do their makeup. And I'm talking 60s, 70s. I've also worked with people in the 50 age range. So I, I think that my tips and tricks will help some of you guys. Hopefully most of you guys. And if you're not in that age range, that's perfectly fine. We are all gonna get there one day. So it's never too early to get tips and tricks on how to work with your skin. I applied my niacinamide dew drops. That's why it looks really dewy. Next, I'm gonna go in with a primer. This time around, I know I haven't used anything other than a grouping primer for a few weeks now, but I'm gonna go ahead and use my Illuminating Ultimate Glow Primer by Rodeo. When it comes to aging skin, one of the main concerns Concerns is fine lines and wrinkles. For me, when I'm applying makeup on a person with aging skin, I don't want to highlight their fine lines and wrinkles. So I would go in and apply the luminosity prior to their bases. Why? Because the foundation is going to tone down the luminosity while still allowing that glow to kind of seep through. So in essence, you're toning it down and it's not going to highlight the areas of concern for you. All right, so we have our luminosity coming through, right? Cool. I'm gonna go in with the Merit Beauty Perfecting Complexion Stick. I never remember anything's actual name, so I'm sorry for that. Mine is in the shade Camel. They were kind enough to send me a backup, which I'm so grateful for because I really like this. The beauty of this is you can apply this all over your skin or you can just conceal your under eyes. You can use it to highlight, so technically, you can get away with applying this in areas that you need it. See, like I have little dark spots, I can do one of those. This is a multi-purpose stick. That's basically what I'm trying to tell you. You can use this as foundation, or you can spot conceal, or you can just go in and use it to conceal your under eyes. The coverage is beautiful. A little bit is gonna go a very long way. And that is another tip for me. If you have aging skin, do not overdo it. I know social media, TikTok, and all of that. Have you seen the TikTok where the person puts the foundation on their hands and then does one of this and eventually it looks amazing on the skin? That's not gonna work for everyone. We're not 18 years old anymore. We don't have 18 year old baby skin. So we have to be very careful with the amount of product that we're applying on our skin. If you're gonna go heavy, go heavy with skincare. And now we're gonna go in and blend it out. Merit Beauty does have a beautiful brush. I have it, but it's dirty right now because I used it two days ago. So I'm gonna go ahead and just use a brush to buff this in. You see, I didn't apply too much. I didn't apply a lot under the eyes. I didn't apply a lot all over their skin because you don't need to. This product is so nice. It's going to cover your imperfections. It's gonna balance out your skin without overdoing it. Now, like I told you guys, I'm gonna keep it simple. This is gonna be like fresh, glowy, every day. It's gonna look almost like second skin. I don't wanna cover everything. I'm going to buff out the under eye area with the very same brush. I'm going in with some additional product in the areas that I feel like I'm going to need it. I've suffered a few little breakouts recently. But if you have perfect skin, skip this. And then I'm gonna lightly buff on top of that. There's not much that I can do about this one here because she's, she's coming to visit. She's, she hasn't arrived yet. She's getting there. 
So once we set it with the powder, you won't notice it as much. The skin is still very glowy. It looks nice, but it looks more balanced. If you have extremely dry skin, try to avoid setting it unless you feel like it's tacky and you don't like that feeling. Then just go in with a super, super fluffy, like the biggest fluffy brush you have. These two are by BK Beauty. A lot of questions on these in my most recent videos. BK Beauty has amazing brushes. This really, really fluffy one would work uh, for what I'm gonna do now, and it is their 105, but you can also do their 104 if you wanna be a little more precise or if it's like the area where you're gonna be applying powder is going to be a smaller area. I'm gonna use um, this Bella Pierre powder just to like set my skin, but look, I mean, I literally went into the cap and I'm doing this. That's what you wanna do, because you don't wanna hide that luminosity. You just kinda wanna set it so it doesn't feel tacky if it feels tacky on your skin. And if you have fine lines and wrinkles, I promise you, you're gonna wanna skip baking under your eyes. Don't do it, don't. It tends to look crepey and weird and eventually it's going to settle and then it's gonna look cakey and you're not gonna like it. Baking will also highlight the under eye area. It's gonna make it a lot brighter, which if you wanna look super awake and you're gonna pull your hair back and you, you can get away with like stretching out the little fine lines and wrinkles, great. If you like that look, that's perfectly fine. But if you have fine lines and wrinkles that are extremely noticeable, you're gonna wanna avoid the baking. You do wanna set your concealer, all you want to do is set very lightly with a powder. Remember, when you're highlighting or making something brighter, you're emphasizing it. Basically saying, hello world, I want you to see it. That's why people apply their uh, highlighter here or in their brow bone area because when the light hits it, that's the first thing people are going to see. Translucent works beautifully. If not, try to use something like a neutral tone, a very, very light pinky tone. But the Bare Minerals one, the original, is really beautiful. Or uh, the Bella Pierre uh, Banana Setting Powders. Now they have three different shades. They have their original, which is the light, then they have the medium, and then they have the dark. So I'm using medium right now. My eyes look a little brighter, but it's not screaming, hey, look at her eyes. Mary Beauty doesn't currently carry any bronzers, but since I'm giving you tips and tricks, I wanna give you guys a little bit of information. First of all, when it comes to aging skin, you do not wanna go super, super, super dark. You wanna go maybe two to three shades darker than your skin tone, because you want it to look really natural. So I'm just going in with a powder that I have. I'm going super light-handed. I can definitely like make this a lot darker. I start off on at the back, like closer to my hairline, and then I blend it forward. Don't bring it all the way to like closer to your nose because you kind of don't want to do that. You want this to seem as natural as it possibly can. So instead of buffing back and forth, I just tap the product so it can lay. And then I just kind of go back and forth like this and finesse it a little bit. And the reason why you don't want to go back and forth is remember, you're not overdoing the powder on your skin. So you want to build additional products on top of it without making it look kind of smudgy. By the way, I say this all the time. So I love that their box has the motto, less is more. Sometimes when you overdo it, it just, it gets out of hand. At least that's my opinion on it. It could be personal preference, I don't know, but like for me, and I do social media, like clearly I'm all over the internet. The extra full face super drama is really just for social media. Like that's not an everyday thing. I don't know anyone that literally puts that much makeup just to chill at home or like to do lunch or anything like that. That's why I try to stick to doing more wearable looks for you guys. I'm gonna start filling in my brows. I'm gonna keep this simple, y'all already know. Now their brow pomade I have tried and it's really nice. It allows you to really comb through your brows build them up and make them look really full and sculpt it without a lot of effort, which I like. Their applicator looks like this. It's like your basic applicator. And if you have thin brows like I do, you can totally just use the tip of it because there's definitely product on that. I mean, look at the difference. My brows still look like they're mine. They just look a little more on the perfect side. This is their cream blush in Beverly Hills. They sent it back up, thank you so much. I'm gonna grab that, add a little flush. Now, when you're using cream products, try your best to focus those out here. If they do not set, you do not wanna bring them all the way to the inner portion of your eye because it eventually creases. You can definitely go in with a little bit of translucent setting powder to set it. Say that you're in the car and you totally forgot any eyeshadow and you have a lipstick, 
you can do that. Just apply it on the outer portion of the eyes. Will it crease? Yes. But when it creases on the outer portions, you don't see it as much as you will see it on the inner portion. So that's a little tip when you're in a little bit of a bind. And then I'm going to take that brush that had that setting powder. No additional powder. I'm just going to tap that right on top. So any product that's still left in the brush kind of set my eyes for me. I'm going to use their mascara, which I've tried already and I really like it. This is their Lengthening Mascara in Perfect Black. Formula is nice, but I like that this is the kind of applicator that we're used to. I am going to back comb. Now here's a mascara tip. I like to saturate the lashes completely from beginning to end with the first coat. Once the coat is somewhat dried, I will go back in and only apply mascara on the outer corner of the lash to extend it and create a flare that'll allow the eye to look a little more lifted versus focusing on making sure that they're just all fluffed out, fluff them towards the outer corner and it'll kind of make your eyes look like this. Almost like a mini eye lift. I don't know if you guys can see it, but they're like flared out this way a little bit. And yeah, you can go in with a third coat if you wanted to. I tend to stick to the two. I am gonna do the same thing, but I'm not gonna apply mascara all the way to the beginning of the eye. You want your eyes to look as big as possible. Unfortunately, as we get older, our eyes tend to look smaller and smaller. Um, and they tend to droop down, which is why I'm giving you a little tip. That way they look more lifted. So at the same time, I'm gonna go in with the mascara and I am only going to apply mascara on this outer portion, like just little outer corner. And instead of pulling down, I'm pulling it out that way as well. Do you notice the difference? First of all, my lashes are like down this way and there's no definition. This eye definitely looks a lot more lifted and more like, I don't like more um vibrant, just full of life. You want to emphasize your cheekbones without having them scream out, look at me, look at me. So. What do we do? We're gonna go in with a brush and we're gonna gently begin back here, bring it up. Again, you want your skin and your face to look more lifted and youthful. So you're gonna start back here because you want most of the product to kind of concentrate it here and then just bring a light flush to your cheekbones. Now I advise using cream products for aging skin solely because your skin will still look luminous. Your skin will look hydrated and healthy and that's what we're all seeking for the moment you start popping powders everywhere it's gonna look drier than if you had no makeup on and that's unfortunate i think that we're all beautiful regardless of our age you can definitely do every single makeup look i'm doing you just have to execute it in a different way there's definitely a process for that so as you see look it still looks natural i look flushed here's the difference and there's just something about makeup that looks like this. It makes you feel better. They sent over two highlighters. I have not tried these before. We have Cava and Bounce. So let me show you what Bounce. Oh, here's Bounce. Here's Cava. I swatched them for you guys so that you can see. Now this one over here is Bounce. I don't know if you guys can see it, like if the camera is really grasping it, but that's a little more on the pinky side. So it's a cooler type of pink. And then this one is more of like a vanilla type of champagne, um, kind of, yeah, not even, it's, fr it's a frosty white. We are going to use Cava with a brush and apply that on the eyes. Another beautiful thing is, and you don't have to use a cream for that. I am using the cream for this very purpose, but you can totally apply a little bit of a shimmer shade on the inner portion of your eye to make it seem bigger, brighter, and wider. And then of course that's gonna make you feel and look like you're more awake. And in this area, I definitely would not set it. I don't think it looks ugly when it starts to move because creams will move on your eyes. It's, it's just kind of what it is. You can go in with a primer and it'll definitely make a difference and slow down the creasing process. But when you apply a cream product that doesn't necessarily dry down matte, it's just a matter of time before it does tend to move around. So it's really up to you if this is something that you wanna do or not. It does give you that kind of like wet look. But for the cheeks, I'm also gonna go in with a brush. You could go in with the product directly onto your skin and it's not gonna make a difference. You'll be fine applying cream products with a brush. It allows you to finesse it a little more. When you're going in with highlight, I would focus the highlight on this portion and out. That's going to emphasize your bone structure. 
you want to leave the center of your face as matte as you possibly can. I mean, it's not matte, right? Because it, it has some luminosity, but you know what I mean? You don't want to apply highlighter all the way through. And I definitely wouldn't apply any highlighter on my nose in this case. So I would start off like right here and bring it back. Now let's get into the lips. I personally would not apply a matte lipstick, at least not a flat, flat matte lipstick on a person of a certain age, you know, a very, very mature person. And that's because as we all age, unfortunately, our lips also tend to get a little on their smaller side. So if anything, that's something that I would totally emphasize. That's where I would apply some like glow, if that makes sense. So what I would do is I would use a lip liner because we're trying to emphasize the lips. As I'm saying, let me grab a lip liner. But I would use a lip liner that's almost as close to your lips as possible. That way you're like defining your very own lip line. Now we can apply the glow to the lips. Merit Beauty sent over two more of their lip oils, which I really like. I have the other two right here. Because these are the two shades that they sent me, I'm going to use one of these. They sent over Au Naturel, which is this one. It's so pretty. But they also sent over a pink beet, and it's this one. Considering that we have a very natural beet going on, I feel like I kind of want to use this one just to add a little like pop of something on the lips. They have your regular doe foot applicator. Look how pretty that is. See, this is where we go in and pack on this oil. Okay, guys, and here is the completed look. Please chime in in the comment section. Let me know whether or not you found this useful. If you're able to implement these tips and tricks into your makeup routine and it does create this transformation of life for you, please let me know. Follow up. Tag me on Instagram. I would love to see it. I want to repost your posts. This makes me really happy to get the feedback from you guys saying you're learning new things. You're learning tips and tricks. You need help with aging skin. That's what I'm here for. I love showing you guys what you can do and all the possibilities that there are with makeup. Okay guys, I really hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you hit the thumbs up button for me. I'd really appreciate that. And it helps my channel and also lets me know that you guys are enjoying these videos as you've been enjoying the other ones. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye guys.